An introduction to sequences. We're going to talk about two types of sequences, arithmetic and geometric. There are other types of sequences we could talk about, but today we're going to classify them into arithmetic and geometric. In order to tell what kind of sequence you're looking at, you need to look at the relationship between the terms. So if I go from term number one to term number two here, I can see that there's a relationship that's the same as if I go from three to eight. So here I'm adding five every time. So to go from two to three, I add five. Negative two to three, I add five. And then from three to eight, I add five. And from, from eight to 13, I add five. And I can go backwards as well. 13 minus eight is five. Eight minus three is five. Three minus negative two is also five. This is an arithmetic sequence. I'm adding every time. This five right here is called the common difference. Because if I take 13 minus eight, I get five, so I'm subtracting. So if I take this term, subtract this term, I, I end up with this common difference of five. And that's called an arithmetic sequence. Now this, if I look at it in the same way, I notice that from three to six, I would add three, but to get from six to 12, adding three would not get me there. And so this is different than an arithmetic sequence. This is called a geometric sequence. Here, to get from three to six, I can multiply by two. And then to get to six from 12, also multiply by two. And to get from 12 to 24, multiply by two. So here, I'm multiplying instead of adding. This is called a geometric sequence. And this two is called the common ratio. And that's because if I take the term after and divide by the term before, 24 over 12, I'll get two. 12 over six, two, six over three, and I will get two. And that's called the common ratio, this two right here. Now, if I take a look over here at the, this sequence, I see that if I add three and add three again, that will not work. What about if I multiply? So I multiply by four, no, four times four is not going to get me to be nine. And there is a relationship in this sequence. It just doesn't classify either under arithmetic or geometric. So in our case, we'll put neither, but there is a relationship between that sequence, just not classified as arithmetic or geometric. Now, if we take a look at the arithmetic sequence, negative two, three, eight, 13, this dot, dot, dot means continues on. We notice that each term has a place. So this is the first place, second place, third place, fourth place of the term. This first, second, third, fourth, or one, two, three, that's N. So we call that N the place of the term. So here N equals one, N equals two, N equals three, and N equals four. T of N is the actual term in that place. So in the first place, we have a, when N equals one, T of one is negative two. So T of one is negative two. So over here in the fourth place, when N is four, T of four is 13. So that's how the n, t of n work. And we can make a table with that n and t of n, and we can see that arithmetic progression here. So we can also see the plus five and the plus five. So we can see this idea of arithmetic in the table. We can also see it in the graph. So if I were to plot these, when I, if I have n as my, in my x-axis and t of n on my y-axis, this is the point one comma negative two. So when t of one, t of in the first place is equal to negative two. So one comma two is a point, a negative two is a point on my graph. So the point one comma negative two. And all of these points are on my graph. t of three equals eight. If I go over here to three, when n equals three, uh, t of three equals eight. So that's on there. And I can see that this right here is a linear progression. So I'm, I'm adding five every time. I'm increasing by five and it makes a line. Now let's take a look at what geometric looks like. So geometric, uh, we can take a look at our, uh, let me fix that 24. In our geometric sequence, we have three, six, 12, and 24. And same sort of thing. So n is the place of the term. So in the first place, when n equals one, the actual term, t of one, is three. So t of one equals three, and that's the point one comma three on my graph, where the x-axis is my n and the y-axis is my t of n. So I can go ahead and plot those, and I notice in this case it's a curve, and actually an exponential curve. 
So I can see the idea of geometric here in my times 2 and my times 2. And my geometric is going to make a curve here. Now these sequences are what's called discrete, which means they are dots and not connected. And so that kind of makes sense if you think about this, because between 3 and 6, when n equals 1 and n equals 2, there's not really an n equals 1 and a half. Like, it doesn't make sense if I'm just looking at this sequence being described in this graph. And so I can't have anything kind of in between 1 and 2, so I have single dots that represent my sequence. And that's geometric and arithmetic sequences in a table and in a graph, and then you can actually see the sequence.